Greetings to all of you in Jesus' name. It's a joy and privilege to have with us here today Pastor and Mrs. Joseph Alexander from Calgary. And uh, we welcome you to Thanks. Harvest TV. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us here Thank today. You. Thank you. And I have known them since 1992. And they have been the pioneers in uh, Calgary. Pastor Joseph, would you like to tell us about your ministry and how it was started in Calgary, Alberta? It is, of course, a great privilege and honor for me to say a few words uh, this morning. First of all, I want to extend my sincere thanks to my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, for this special privilege and also His mercy and His grace in our lives. And what I really wanted to say something about this conference, that it wasn't ever started as a conference in the beginning. In those years, like in the early years, to see an another believer uh, in the Lord is a, is a great privilege. It's like a hunger and thirst in our lives to see somebody. So we occasionally used to travel from Calgary to Edmonton. The Edmonton believers uh, come to Calgary and we spend uh, quite a time in uh, weekends. And uh, finally, we decided about 30 years ago I remember that we have invited some of the brethren from Edmonton to come to Calgary and a, a good time of fellowship. Uh, so we have invited them. A handful of believers came from Edmonton. I would say all together it was around 10 families. And we went for a picnic in one of the park there called Fish Creek Park. And then we came back to our humble basement. In that night, we had a wonderful prayer fellowship. And uh, following day uh, was a Sunday. So we had got together at uh, Joe Cadaville's house uh, for a Sunday worship. And in fact, we never had a pastor or anybody, those guest who speaker. could uh, uh, lead us, no guest speaker, nothing. But amazingly, God's spirit was moving in that place. So from there on, I remember that Wilson Cadaville asked us to come to, uh, to, to Edmonton on the following year. And, uh, so this is 30 years back. 30 yeah. years back. Yeah, okay. And uh, all the believers from Calgary went to Edmonton. In the same way, we had a picnic as well as uh, uh, some good time of fellowship. That fellowship, uh, amazingly, by the grace of God, God sent a man of God from Dallas, Texas. His name was Weiss Sakraya. Uh, he's a scholar in the Word of God. And uh, he really preached us from the Word of God and everybody was so excited. I remember my daughter Sophie got baptized in that Daddy. particular time. And uh, that was the time. I'm sorry that I have to explain a little bit about no, it. You don't have and, time, uh, and I believe that um, one of the brethren from uh, Vancouver, his name was uh, Brother John, he was a teacher, and uh, he was attending in that con in, in that Vancouver meeting. From Vancouver or was it from? Uh, uh, mission. From Mission. From mission. mission. Yeah. yeah. And this uh, brother was so excited to see this unity of the brethren in Edmonton. And um, he went and shared this great news with uh, Dr. Matthew Koshi. From Vancouver. Uh, you were in Vancouver. And Matthew Koshi was so excited. And uh, with the three other brethren, they drove through the Rockies uh, in the winter time, extremely in bad weather condition, and came to Calgary and Edmonton and encouraged us to have this following year meeting in, uh, in Vancouver. Vancouver. In fact, in Vancouver, that we knew that God's spirit is in this area. Now that was the third year. Third, third year. year yeah. So that was the year that we have really put the name Western Pentecostal Conference. Conference. Because we didn't want to avoid anybody. We didn't want any kind of denominational spirit in there. We wanted everyone to be joined there, those who have uh, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. and. Uh, from there on, there is a amazing unity that I have, I have been watching 
in this conference. And the conference is entirely going on by faith. God has been sending some amazing, amazing men and women of God to come here and uh, minister to us. It's, it's, it's really a vital part of our, uh, our, our, our spiritual life that, I, I'm, you know, most of the time what is happening that um, at the end of this conference, when everybody leaves this place, everybody feels that something they are missing. Right. Most of them are waiting for the following year to see uh, all these brethren to come back. There's no politics, there is no division. There are some people that I really want to admire, like Dr. Matthew Koshi, was uh, such an inspiration in this area that many times that we went through uh, hills and valleys yes, and, yes. Uh, you know, the experience were different, but amazingly that, that man of God was uh, uh, such an inspiration yes, yes. in this. I have so many other people of God that I could mention by names, but I don't want to go into it, but especially that I mentioned his name because he was one of the, uh, one of the biggest hand a pillar of this uh, conference. Uh, this conference. He helped you to keep going. Yes, keep yes, going, yes. Yeah, exactly. And like Shirley, he's been such a beautiful writer mm -hmm. and uh, an inspiration. And there are many, many other people came across, you know. Mm -hmm. If I if I mention everybody's name, it may not be right that sometimes I may be able to, you know, miss somebody's name. So the third year when it was held in Vancouver, yeah. that was when it was named Western Pentecostal Conference. Western Pentecostal Conference. Now, um, I, was it at that time that uh, people from Seattle and yes, Portland yes, came? Yes, yes, yes. When it held in Vancouver, the third one, uh, there are people came from Seattle and even from Portland. I remember, um, you know, there are some people like uh, uh, C.D. Cherry, yeah, CD, Pastor C.D. Cherry and Jeffries and all these people were, and there are some uh, families, they've been quite dedicated to it. And uh, even they travel from Seattle to Calgary to see uh, the other brother. Actually, uh, seeing one another is, is something like a, uh, like a, you know, water for the thirsty people, you right. know. It, it's been such a privilege mm. to be part of it. What is um, your vision for the next generation? We have our youth, you know, coming up in a very good way. They have their own sessions going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. What do you see as your vision for the next generation? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I believe it's the time to, to pass the mantle over to them. I believe that uh, it's, it's like a relay that the baton has to be uh, passed over. I believe that we have many, many young blood. And they are also excited because it's not, there is no boundaries in this conference. It's completely, the flow of the Holy Spirit is very even in every area, that you won't see any, any, any boundaries. Um, you know, the, that's why from the beginning there is no denominational spirit like IPC or Church of God or, you know, Assemblies of God or Sharon or TPM. I, I myself, I, I was born and brought up in TPM faith, you know. And I'm, I'm excited to see all those who are washed by the blood of the Lamb. And also we, we don't want to limit this conference in the Malayalam boundaries either. Right. See, that's why we didn't put Keralites in that. We wanted to put the name Western Pentecostal Conference, that even there are Tamilians or Telugu, all those people could come and join And from join Vancouver it. especially, there are many Punjabis. Yes, that yes, again. that Punjab, actually, the, them. Mm -hmm. the oh. Punjabi community, especially the one, those who are affiliated with the Dr. Matthew Koshi, they are actively involved in it whenever we do the ministry in, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some powerful, powerful mm -hmm. people there, very knowledgeable people in the Word of God. Right. Yeah. Do you find, um, can you say there's anything unique about Western Pentecostal Conference from the other conferences? 
you know, it, it is unique by itself. You know, I, I am not really degrading any other conference because there always there is something beauty in every conference. Every conference. But this one, I believe it is a vital part of my life, my children's life, and, and they always remember right. what daddy and mom had done in their list. And I also really want to, to, to express my gratitude to all the women that they worked so hard, including my wife, and oh, you know, no, and uh, <laughs> all the people worked so hard that uh, that we want to accommodate everybody. Right. You know, in the early years, that we as we started our lives, that uh, we never had enough money to go and stay in a hotel. So every families will accommodate three, four families, right. and cook for them, and it is a it is like a privilege. And, uh, and and an honor. So God honored that. See, in the early years, especially, there were only few believers scattered throughout the uh, western uh, part of the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So in the eastern part, there are a lot of believers like New York and Toronto right. and all those big cities. But apparently, uh, no, nobody wanted to come this part of the world. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was too cold for them. Uh, but the grace of God, we are used to this cold now. But, you know, moreover, what I would say, it is an amazing grace of God. Right. It's, it's, it's mercy. You know, we are going to be able to do our own work. I hope this will last forever until our Lord come back. Amen. And God is going to raise up many young blood to carry this torch and and and, and extend the boundaries uh, that we cannot even uh, measure that boundary. And um, you know, this year there's close to about seven, between 7,500 youth here. Uh -huh. I remember your daughter Sophie was a very good youth leader and she was very active in um, taking part in you know leading many of the youngsters into um, while, the, while the conferences were in Calgary and uh, what is your daughter uh, doing right now? In fact Sophie is in full-time ministry as well as in the full-time secular uh, business that uh, she's doing recruitment agency for law firms but that is on her side but she has a passion for the Lord passion for the souls and uh, she has an husband with the same same attitude that uh, even though he's an engineer he left his engineering job that is in the full-time ministry uh, I, I really honor them because uh, you know it's it's an amazing thing that God gave them a passion sometimes I even uh, I even grab some beautiful nature from them myself because they are able to advise us. So there are so many young people like them right. that they may want to dedicate their lives with a passion for souls. Uh, it's an amazing thing. They see, as older people, that we all come with a certain kind of negative feelings in our well, lives. The traditional culture. Traditional, uh, yeah. yes. Sophie is a worship leader in our church. Yeah. So we just uh, pass the mandal to Sophie to and her. Sam. Yes. So we, then uh, yeah. Sam is the senior pastor in our church. Oh, we are great. sitting yeah. at That's the back, we are helping whatever. They yeah. So help. you yeah. have handed over yeah. the mandal two years ago. Two years they ago we have handed over the ministry to them. We are very happy. But right. and, uh, we are proud of them. They are, they are extremely doing a tremendous job. Right. Many people coming from different backgrounds. We have about 14 to 15 nationalities there. And it, it's amazing how God is touching these young people. Yeah. I hope God may touch many young people many. that they may be able to... See, we are the salt of the earth. You know, we are the light of the world. I, I believe this is the time that uh, our young people uh, have to come out and, uh, and 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 bring that light for the world. Amen. You have been a part of uh, Western Pentecostal Conference for mm -hmm. the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
uh, over the years, um, what are some of the highlights and uniqueness of mm. Western Pentecostal Conference that you have noticed and what has kept the mm. unity together? Mm -hmm. The uniqueness, if I give you an example, for a few examples, that the Western Pentecostal Conference has a, has a different uh, structure altogether. I believe this structure has been given by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this structure that uh, we are completely, I would say, 90% by faith itself. Yeah, uh, because we don't pass uh, offering plates in every meetings uh, or every day. That uh, we have taken a decision before the Lord that only one offering will be taken uh, in the entire conference. That would be on, on Saturdays. That Saturday night, everybody will be prepared for a, an offering. And that offering, by the grace of God, we never ever was short of money. And all these expenses will be met by that conference. Right. And the whole city, uh, is it, uh, are they the ones responsible for everything? Yes, the local uh, group, whosoever hosting this conference, they are completely responsible for it. There is a, uh, they, it's, it's that, uh, that local group uh, will be taking decisions entirely. Uh, so the, the, the decision will be taken by the, uh, the host city. So there is no politics in it. So there is plenty of food in it. Like we, we provide, the, the, the host city provides all the food, three times meals. Do you have to pay for it? No, no, it's, it's, it's completely free. As well as there is no registration fee. And those who can't afford to stay in a hotel or some, somewhere, and uh, the host city will provide them with accommodations. So it's, uh, in fact, uh, that is the uniqueness in right. it. Uh, that nobody will be, and everybody will get an opportunity to minister mm -hmm. uh, in the conferences. So, uh, nobody will be left behind. So, everybody is excited. So, no, there's nobody fighting for a position? No. Or, uh, no, 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 uh, <laughs> no, everybody actually, yeah. this is exactly happening and nobody is asking for that I need a position. I believe the Holy Spirit selects somebody, right? You know, through men and women of God. So there is no voting, no, there is no kind of politics in it. Right. It's amazing that uh, you know people are willing to travel far to and attend. And drive, this. drive yeah. many hours. For example, we are in the 70s. Uh, yeah, like yeah, I am, yeah, I am 70. Do <laughs> my wife is 70. We drove all the way from Calgary to Seattle. It is about 1,500 kilometers. But it's a beautiful drive. It right? is a beautiful it's drive. Easy, yes. We enjoyed it. Uh, we know that it is it's worthwhile to it do is, it. Yes. Uh, I, I believe the same way that in the early years, people used to travel from Portland to Calgary. Right. Uh, and Calgary to Portland. And, and this is, a, this is an amazing experience. Uh, you talked about your daughter, Sophie. How many mm. other children do you have? I have two more boys. Mm -hmm. uh, I have already spoke about Sophie. Sophie has a, no, a great children. quality. And as well as uh, the other two boys are uh, actually blessed. And we are blessed by them uh, because uh, their maturity is so higher than our maturity in those ages. And my second son uh, um, is a, a lawyer and he has a, a wife and two children and uh, such a blessed family. And uh, he's been for uh, many years as a, served as an elder in my ministry. And all my children always been part of uh, my ministry and they've been such a, blessing from God. Praise and God the, yeah. for that. Yeah. And the youngest boy is, uh, is single still, uh, but he's been uh, serving to his extent. I won't say that he's coming to the point that we wanted him to, mm -hmm. and also the Lord wants him, but I believe that there is, there is word on him. 
that someday he will serve the Lord. Amen. And we are excited with my family. My wife is always beside me to support me in prayer and give me all those wisdom, oh. and the womanly <laughs> wisdom and, uh, and advice. Uh, I, I take it. Uh, uh, surely they are not in second grade, even though I speak now more of the speech, but she has the same thoughts, I believe. Well, behind every successful man, there's yes. a woman who turns the neck. So, Amen. Uh, praise God for a yeah. mama's Thank life too. He, and uh, yeah, you cannot do all by yourself. You know, as I said before, uh, I came from India. Uh, that I I wanted to be always with the Malayalis in my ministry, but at the same time the Lord has given me a, a vision about the nations. Right. That's why for the last 15 years, besides this uh, association with the Malayali group, I am serving the body of Christ. Uh, uh, in different nationalities and uh, God has given us the vision through the word that uh, to open up a ministry among the nations God has blessed us with many nations and I, I believe the beauty of the nations are so high that Amen. only when you when you come to know the nations you know as the word of God says that God is going to shake the heavens and the earth God is going to shake the the, the mm. sea and the dry land, God is going to shake all the nations and the desires of the, be, uh, the people, the nations will come into the house of God. And God is going to make the house of God so glorious. God has brought us in this part of the world with a purpose. I strongly believe that's why even the theme words came like, uh, you know, uh, radiance, radiance in, in darkness. darkness. That means we are the radiance. We are the light. God didn't bring us here to, to make some money and uh, live like uh, some, I mean, some luxury lifestyle, uh, you know, eat some peanut butter and jam and everything and, uh, and, and uh, take all the cholesterol into our body and die in, uh, in early age. God has brought us here with a purpose. So we are here as missionaries more than mm. immigrants. You know, years back, God sent missionaries from west, uh, from the west, and from Europe uh, to enlighten the the eastern hemisphere as well as Africa. But I believe now it is our turn to come to this country and carry that torch, uh, which has been laid by them, and move on with the foundation. And I believe this land was built on the foundations of the Pilgrim Fathers. So we are the one, the, the last race. God is looking for uh, somebody who's energetic and excited to run the race as the, as, the, as the last one. So I believe we are the one in the, in the, in the last race uh, before the coming of the Lord. So you said you have already handed over the mantle to your daughter and son-in-law, Sam and Sophie, and uh, you're now uh, sitting back and watching them, but what is your passion for the next uh, few years? You know, there is no retirement in, in ministry. the ministry. Yeah. We are not leaving the church. Okay. If yeah. my son, uh, son-in-law, Sophie, if they want to go for a holidays, they are more than, you know, happy to take that one. They, they could go without any, any, any kind of issues because we are there to, to look after the church. As well as whenever that usually we go every year about three to four months in India. I built a retirement house there by the grace of God. We go there and we are doing ministry in different part of Kerala and even in Tamil Nadu to the extent what we could do it. Uh, I'm not saying that we are full time doing ministry, but our heart is for the lost souls. Praise God. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that every day that you look at the past and you are looking at the lost time and trying to catch up with that lost time mm -hmm. that you would be able to accomplish what God has called you to do it. Yes. And uh, also these days that we are spending some time, I know that uh, in all our lives that we never mixed 
Uh, I, I don't like, as a man of God, I never wanted to mix uh, spiritual life with the politics. But in the last while, I've been uh, involved with uh, some ministry in a, in a, in a party. Polit it's a political party, but it's completely based on God's word. It's a Christian heritage party. What they are standing on this, the, the, the principles that God has laid uh, on the foundation when he built Canada, for example. Canada was invented, I mean, uh, established by godly men and women of God. But Canada is losing its heritage. Right. And uh, just, you see, this is why I said that we are the last one in this race. Um, and what we are trying to do is to, 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 to ex encourage God's people to understand that we are, we have a responsibility. Right. We have a responsibility. That responsibility is bring back the lost time. See, now there is no fear of God in Western countries. You know, when you look in the, in, in the United States, I believe that uh, by God himself elected a man. Even though Trump is not the exact person that we all wanted, but I believe he was just like Cyrus. In the, you know, the heathen king was raised by God to build the temple. So this is what exactly in the States, because many men and women of God were praying God to send somebody. Even I believe Trump himself did never believe that he's going to win. Because he, if he wasn't there, it would have been a disaster. So the same way in Canada, I believe that we have a prime minister now, he has no fear of God. He was, he was dancing before the LGBT parade. A lay, uh, you know, lesbian gay parade. He was, uh, he was dancing before it as no fear of God. So many politicians have no fear of God. There are a lot of terrorists, those who do not love this nation, coming there and destroying the principles our forefathers laid for the nation. So we are involved in this CHP, Christian Heritage Party. We wanted this nation to understand what God has done for this nation. I would like to thank both of you, uh, Pastor and Mrs. Joseph Alexander, for your time. And uh, we pray God's blessings upon your ministry and that you will continue to shine and be the salt and light of the earth. Thank, thank you very you much. For